Alright, in this video I'm just going to review the Sony FDR X3000, which is the um, it's a 4K action camera designed for travellers, I guess, and being outside and action type of stuff. And so yeah, this is the camera. What I'll probably do is overlay some better footage of just this camera. So in a nutshell, this is the only video camera I've been using for travel videos, apart from what you're seeing this filmed on, which is a Sony RX100 Mark VII. What I think I'll do is just go through a few, you know, a few basic points about this camera and answer the question, should you buy this in 2020? Because, you know, the chances are you're looking for a camera, the, the new GoPro's just come out, you're probably wondering, you know, is it worth getting this, this Sony still? Because, to be honest, this has a lot of good features that the GoPro, yeah, it has some of the features, but this is a fraction of the price. Uh, and also, it's just good. It's just a very good alternative to GoPro. There's one major thing I think is best about this camera, which, in my opinion, makes it far better than GoPro. Uh, so I actually did buy a GoPro Hero 7 Black, I believe. It was a 7 one. Uh, and I returned it. And the reason for that is that you can't easily take the battery out. The two that I got, um, the battery case just would not, you know, you would open the battery case, try and pull the battery out, and you have to pull on that tiny, stupid little ribbon thing um, that GoPro batteries have. It's just a tiny ribbon, and if you rip it, you can't get your battery out, and you're stuffed. Now, if you're like me, and you actually produce hours of video content a day sometimes, uh, you need to be able to take out your batteries really quickly. So this is how easy it is on this camera. This is how easy it is on this camera. I don't even need to take it off the tripod. Okay, I literally just go like this, push that down, open the case, and of course there's no battery in it, but I would just take one out or put one in there. Literally as easy as that. Uh, and that is such a huge time saver for me. And that's the reason I, I love this camera, because you can easily change the battery. Now in terms of wide angle, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna overlay some footage of that I've taken with the Sony FDR X3000 camera um, because that's the best way of showing you. You know, it's a really good camera. Um, it, it, the benefit of it is that you don't need to worry about making sure you've got everything in the shot. You literally just hold it like, so it's pointing at you basically. And as long as it's pointing at you, you're gonna get pretty much everything in that shot with some exceptions, you know? Um, and it's the same thing. If you wanna film something over there, you literally just hold it. Like you could hold it anywhere. And because it's so stabilized, and such a wide angle, you're, you're always gonna get the shot. Now in terms of quality, yes, it can do 4K, but realistically, nobody's watching 4K. Nobody's using 4K videos. You know, if you go to YouTube, you're either on your phone, in which case the most quality you, you're gonna use is 1080p, or you're on your laptop, in which case you're sort of dependent on your internet connection. If your internet isn't super fast, you can't even watch 4K. And if you're like me and you have a MacBook Pro, uh, or sorry, a MacBook Air, I should say, um, you, your screen can't even support 4K videos. You can't even see that high of a resolution on your laptop anyway. So there's really no point to having 4K. That being said, it can do 4K. Uh, but if you're comparing you know, the 4K capability of this to the GoPro, no one cares about 4K. You know, you're watching this in 1080p. Um, you watch probably other travel videos in 1080p, unless you've got like a giant monitor, giant TV screen. No, the world isn't ready for 4K videos. And that being said, they're also a nightmare to edit, by the way. They take up loads of space. It, everything takes 10 times as long to edit, to render, to export. So realistically, you're not gonna use the 4K anyway. So really what you'll be using when you when you buy this um, is 1080p. And for, the, for 1080p, it is perfect. This is stabilized uh, and better than that, it's actually optically stabilized, meaning that meaning that there's something, there's a physical lens inside here that actually moves around. Um, and this means that, yeah, you get great stabilization, but it also means that you don't have, the camera doesn't crop into the image any much, you know, compared to the GoPro, which you might lose with stabilization on, you might lose like 10% uh, of the image uh, width, you know, the field of view. That's how stabilization works. What they do is they record the image in, you know, let's say 100, at 100%, width and then when they stabilize it what they really do is they cut they trim the video by about 10 or 20 percent and then that frame that small frame to stabilize the video they just move that frame around within the bigger frame that the camera has actually filmed so the camera in the case of gopro captures 100 percent of the of the frame 
And then to stabilize it, they just take in a smaller frame. So they cut the video, they you know take a strip around the edge, and then they just electrically move that frame around to try and keep whatever is in the middle stabilized, basically. This is a bit different. So what this does is it actually uh, stabilizes the whole image, the whole frame, ele uh, electrically and also optically. So with a physical movement of the lens. Now, yeah, you probably don't care about that, but it makes it better, in my opinion, because it means you get the, the full frame. You know, you don't have to worry about cropping in the image or whatever. So yeah, GoPro has better stabilization in terms of like when you see the final product, but this is by far good enough. So yeah, for me, the main reason, okay, that I prefer this over the GoPro is, yeah, the GoPro has better stabilization. It probably looks better as well, you know, in terms of the colors and the quality and everything like that. Uh, but in terms of realistically using it on a day-to-day -day basis, because I've tested both, right? And remember, I film for hours a day sometimes. Like when I'm on a trip, I'll film sometimes three or four hours of video content in a day. And for that amount of content, I need about six spare batteries, which I do with this. I have a you know a pouch of spare batteries. Um, but importantly, I can easily change batteries on this. If you've tried to change the batteries in a GoPro, you know, especially the the, the Hero Seven when it gets hot, okay, because it's it's all, it's very different when the when the camera gets hot because it's been recording for about an hour or so, the battery expands. And if you think, if your hands are sweaty, you're in Thailand or wherever, your hands are sweaty, it's hot and humid, um, the, bat the camera's been recording for half an hour, it's warm, okay? You need to change batteries quickly. And all you have to go on is you have to try and pull with, and there's no grip on these things, by the way, you have to try and pull on this tiny little ribbon, plastic ribbon, to try and wrench the battery out of the battery compartment. It didn't come out. I mean, for me, I had to literally use like pliers to grip this thing and pull it out of the case. Um, whereas with this, let me show you how easy it is to change a battery in this thing. All right, so the battery's in, it's filming, whatever, it's on. Uh, so then you clip this thing down. And then you'll have here this little area, the battery here. To take it out, you literally just pull this little blue tab back and it just pops out like that and then you can easily take the battery out and put another one in. It's a time saver, it really is. So, and if you combine that, by the way, with, um, I actually use a particular tripod called, I think it's the Man Manfrotto. There'll be a link in the description for this, but this is this, this tripod. Now, the reason I use this particular one is because to actually change the angle, all you need to do is press this button in. So I just literally press this button in and the whole thing becomes loose. So I can just immediately get the perfect angle, like exactly how I want it, let go of the button and it's it's locked in place. It won't go anywhere. And trust me when I say that is a huge time saver to, to be able to just lock it in place like that, you know, without having to unscrew something, without having to get all fiddly with the ball, uh, the ball mount there, it's a big time saver. <laughs> so I literally could just set this up as quickly as this. I could literally just put it down, arrange that and let go of the ball mount. And that is, you know, as you can see in the background, ready to film. It's in place, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, yeah, so uh, what I might do is just link in the description to some, some videos I filmed on this thing. Um, but more importantly, if you do want to get this camera, uh, please click the link in the description. It is an affiliate link, so I will get a small commission, but it doesn't cost you any extra. And if you did like this video, you know, it's a, it's a way of you supporting me without uh, me having to have excessive ads or anything like that. So yeah, click the link in the description. I hope you get this camera because it really is a good camera. Like I do, I feel, um, I've always thought if, if a camera is good enough, it should feel really fun to take it out and start filming things. And it is like that for me. I, you know, all the, all the time I think, when can I next get out and film with this thing? You know, because it's so easy to do. It's, it, there's no barrier to creation here. You can literally just take this thing, press the button and it turns on in what, with one button, it turns on and starts recording immediately. You don't have to worry about the screen. You don't have to be distracted by any of that stuff. You just turn it on, hold it out and you're immediately ready to go. So um, I will actually be making a few sort of tip videos about this, some advice, some little hacks that I found to be useful for using the thing. Cause I, like I said, I've used this thing for almost a year now. Uh, and during that year, I've gone on lots of trips and uh, I've used it for, you know, in many cases I've used this thing for hours per day. So I feel like I've got a good understanding of how it works. And by the way, this is not a tech channel. This is not a review channel. I barely make review videos on this channel. The only cameras I review 
are the ones I actually use every single day. I own two cameras, that one and the one I'm filming this video with. And that's why I'm reviewing them because I use them so often and they are so good. You know, I, I wanted the best camera, I wanted the best action camera, and I wanted the best compact vlogging camera, which is the Sony RX100 Mark Seven. And again, there's a link to that in the description as well if you wanna see that, but yeah, just in my opinion, the best cameras for all round content creation. That one I use for travel vlogging and you know, when I'm out and about walking, stabilized stuff. And then this one I use for making, you know, better videos where you can blur the background out, you know, I can do all kinds of funky stuff like the background blurs, the audio is good, it has autofocus, and yeah, it's just a good camera. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you do want to see my other, you know, travel videos and stuff I actually film with this thing, um, with this camera in the background there, or this one, then um, yeah, you know where the videos are, they're on my channel. So I'll see you in the next video.